Chapter 4 Sleep, Need, and Peak Performance Everybody sleeps, but how much sleep do we need to feel fully alert, energetic, and primed for peak performance? And what are the specific consequences when we don't get all the sleep we need? First, we turn to a theoretical model that explains why we tend to fall asleep or stay awake at particular times during the night and day. The Opponent Process Model of Sleep and Wakefulness Sleep experts Dr. William DeMent and Dr. Dale Edgar have postulated that our brains possess two opponent processes that determine our tendency to fall asleep or remain awake. The homeostatic sleep drive and the clock dependent alerting process. The homeostatic sleep drive Sleep is induced and maintained by a homeostatic sleep drive, a physiological process that strives to obtain the amount of sleep needed to provide for a stable level of daytime alertness. This process is active throughout the night and keeps us asleep. For most people, it takes at least 8 hours of sleep to provide for 16 hours of sustained wakefulness. Interestingly enough, the homeostatic sleep drive continues its work during the daytime. As our waking hours progress, the need to sleep is continuously building. Although usually not so much as to overpower wakefulness, however, if we slept too little during the previous nights and have a sleep debt, the tendency to fall asleep during the day will be significant, and we might indeed fall asleep at an an inappropriate time. Conversely, an abundance of nocturnal sleep will reduce the tendency to be sleepy during the day. The Clock-Dependent Alerting Process Wakefulness is induced and maintained by a clock-dependent alerting process, which is controlled by our biological clock. The biological clock is actually two tiny neural structures called the suprachiasmatic nuclei, located in the center of the brain. The clock controls rhythms of alertness, but not sleep, body temperature, and hormone production. These rhythms are an an intricate and orderly series of psychological and physiological changes that occur approximately every 24 hours and are called circadian rhythms, derived from the Latin circa, meaning around, and D's meaning a day. As we shall see, the rhythm of alertness can range from foggy and slow down to fully alert. Depending on such factors as time of day, where we are, and what we happen to be doing at the moment, our biological clock and hence the clock dependent alerting process and its rhythms is affected by exposure to light. Daylight signals the biological clock to stop the secretion of melatonin a hormone that induces sleep and to promote and consolidate a period of wakefulness. But what happens if you have no cues as to daylight and darkness? Will you always remain asleep, or at least not know when to wake up or stay up? Biological clock experiments have been carried out with subjects who volunteered to spend several weeks in a cave or a windowless room. The research provided two fascinating discoveries. Our biological clock functions even in the absence of external time cues such as daylight and darkness and the clock dependent alerting process runs or oscillates on a schedule close to 25, not 24 hours to length, in length. So the subjects isolated from time cues tend to go to sleep one hour later each night. Living in a normal environment you must resynchronize your internal 24 25 hour clock every morning to adjust to the 24 hour external day night clock this minor adjustment of one hour each day is easily tolerated by your body and usually goes unnoticed but if you maintain vastly different bedtimes and rising times for the work week and on weekends, or if you are a shift worker frequently rotating between day and night schedules, or if you fly across multiple time zones, your biological clock 
need to make a major adjustment to get in sync with your new schedule or local time environment. Otherwise, your alarm clock for alertness will be buzzing at the wrong time in your sleep-wake schedule. You'll be wide awake when you want to sleep and sleepy when you want to be awake. Information how to cope with these vexatious problems is provided in Chapter 10, Surviving as a Shift Worker, and Chapter 11, Reducing Travel Fatigue. It's important to keep your biological clock in absolute synchrony with your daily routine. In this way, the hours you spend in bed will correspond with the sleepy phase of your circadian rhythm and the hours you spend out of bed will correspond with the awake phase of your, of your circadian rhythm. The only way to do this is to maintain a regular sleep schedule, going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every day, seven days a week, as described in Chapter 5, The Golden Rules of Sleep. Animal who's Animals whose biological clocks have been surgically removed do not experience any circadian peri periodicity, any cir circadian periodicity in wake or sleep, and the daily episode of consolidated alert wakefulness is eliminated. But the ability to wake up and remain awake, at least for short periods, is not lost. They will stay awake until the homeostatic sleep drive has increased enough to facilitate sleep. Humans without a biological clock to to keep them alert for a consolidated daytime period would probably stay awake for one or two hours, then sleep for a few hours to repay the debt. It would be a very different existence and probably not a very pleasant or productive one at that. Independent of our sleep drive, there are fluctuations across the day in the strength of the alertness rhythm itself. Clock dependent alerting appears to be moderately strong in mid-morning, quite weak in the early afternoon, the mid-afternoon dip or tro, and fairly strong from late afternoon to mid-evening, see figure 4.1. So we experience ups and downs in our alertness level over the course of the day, even if we've had adequate nocturnal sleep, asleep or awake. Whether we are asleep or awake at any given time depends on the relative forces exerted between the two opponent processes, our homeostatic sleep drive and our clock alerting process. They interact to produce our daily cycle of sleep and wakefulness. During the daytime, the drive for sleep is heavily countered by our clock dependent alerting process and for the most part we stay awake. As the evening progresses, our ability to think slows down because we need to fight the urge to sleep. Late in the evening, the biological clock becomes inactive and sleep takes over. Whenever we carry a sleep debt, we are likely to feel sleepy in the daytime, as the drive to sleep will begin to overpower the clock-dependent alerting process. At particular times during the day, such as early to mid-afternoon, the rather low strength of the clock-dependent alerting process at that time will easily be overcome by a stronger drive to sleep. Especially if we haven't met our sleep need at night, we look for an opportunity to nap. The sleep drive is insidious, always there, ready to overtake the unsuspecting person who might be preoccupied with some engaging activity. You may not feel particularly sleepy at the moment, but the need to sleep is still present and can overwhelm you as soon as you stop doing anything stimulating. You are now at risk of falling asleep instantly, especially if you are carrying a large sleep debt. Let's hope you aren't driving a car on a monotonous highway. The sleep deprived majority, you're probably getting the right amount of sleep if you feel alert all during the day with no slump or fatigue until your regular daytime, your regular bedtime. If you're not sleepy in sedentary situations such as driving a car or sitting in a boring meeting during the mid-afternoon tro and alertness, you're among the alert minority and need read further. Give this book to a sleepy friend. Many busy executives mistakenly assume they are good sleepers because they fall asleep immediately when they get into bed or when they're sitting in an airplane. 
This is a sure indication of sleep deprivation. The well-rested person takes 15 to 20 minutes to fall asleep. Think how ridic ridiculous it would be to brag about being a good eater because you devour meals the instant they are put in front of you. Such behavior would be indicative of food deprivation, not good nutrition practices. Likewise, if you fall asleep the instant your head hits the pillow, you are manifesting a sign of serious sleep deprivation. By far, the majority of us are significantly sleep deprived, yet remain ignorant of how much it affects our mood, performance, and behavior. We often surmise we are doing just fine. Why? Because we feel as alert as because we feel alert as long as we've engaged in vigorous, interesting, challenging, and stimulating tasks. But we readily excuse any drowsiness we feel after a heavy lunch or a low dose of alcohol, or if we're in a warm room or listening to a dull lecture or attending a boring meeting. We mistakenly attribute our sleepiness to these causes and not to an underlying sleep debt. But guess what? None of these events cause sleepiness. Such situations simply unmask the physiological sleepiness already in your body. In fact, if you've had adequate sleep, things like warm rooms and dull meetings will make you bored, mad, uncomfortable, and restless but not sleepy. Even though most of us think we're doing okay, we might be unknowingly carrying around years of accumulated sleep debt. We slowly habituate ourselves over time to a low level of alertness thinking that how we feel now is normal. The truth is that most of us are functioning at a level far from optimal, far from the level of alertness that en enables us to be energetic, wide awake, happy, creative, productive, motivated, and healthy human beings. Your sleep debt bank account. Each of us maintains a personal sleep bank account. We need enough sleep in that account to maintain the stable condition of sleep homeostasis, which will keep us alert during the day. Any sleep you get is a deposit of or asset. Any hour of wakefulness is a withdrawal or debt. What does the average person's sleep account balance statement look like? It turns out that half the adult population is carrying a substantial sleep debt. As every hour you spend awake increases your sleep debt, you must continually make sleep deposits in your account. Most people need to deposit at least 8 hours of sleep in the account to cancel the sleep debt incurred by 16 hours of continuous alertness. You need to obtain the amount of sleep each night that does not create a carryover sleep debt, says Stanford's Dr. William DeMent. Otherwise, you'll be in debt and drowsy day after day. A sleep debt can build quickly, much like finance charges or an unpaid bank balance, if you're burning the candle at both ends. For more than two years, a Phoenix medical technician tried to get by on two to four hours of sleep a day. She worked nights at ironically a sleep disorders center so she could take care of her infant daughter during the day. She said she wasn't a good wife or a good mother and wasn't good to herself. She reported the following symptoms, heart palpitations, being dizzy, afraid to drive, being crabby, and having mood shifts from being up 20 hours a day. Contrary to popular belief, a sleep debt does not dissipate by itself over time, and it's cumulative. A one-hour sleep loss every night for an entire week is equivalent to having pulled one all-nighter. The only way to repay your sleep debt is to get more sleep. You can't repay years of sleep debt by one night of good sleep, any more than you can compensate for years of overeating by a one-day diet. It takes some time to repay debts and establish a good schedule, but it can be done. In the next few chapters, we will be telling you how to accomplish this critical task. People who take the time to find out what their sleep requirements are and then do the necessary things to get good sleep always exclaim after four to six weeks of their new sleep-wake routine. I never before knew what it was like to be awake. It can be that profound a difference. 
but too f few people know of their sleepy states of existence simply because most of us don't understand our own sleep need and the power of sleep in preparing the body and mind for peak performance. We don't value sleep. We fail to recognize the nearly linear relationship between sleep deprivation and performance. It's time for you to change that to seriously heed a wake-up call. Sleep requirements for optimal performance. Just how much sleep is required to be in balance to experience a total sense of well-being and be fully prepared for optimal performance. Researchers are now finding evidence that our natural need for sleep might be as much as 10 hours per night. People in cultures that are free of the demands of a modern industrialized society typically sleep this much, but when among the harried and the busy would be willing to consider such a luxurious schedule. Devoting even eight hours to sleep seems like an, an unobtainable goal. Yet, the consequences for less than ideal sleep can be troublesome if not serious. Ten hours of sleep is operationally defined as our need because that's what is often required for optimal performance. Timothy Ra Roars and Thomas Roth at the Sleep Disorders Research Center of the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, have demonstrated that alertness significantly increases when eight hour sleepers who claim to be well rested get an additional two hours of sleep. Energy, vigilance, and the ability to effectively process information are all enhanced as are critical thinking skills and creativity. While most of us can s operate satisfactorily on eight hours of sleep, we are simply not at our best. Furthermore, there exists no safety margin for occasions when we get less than that amount, which unfortunately occurs all too frequently. As soon as we lose as little as an hour's sleep, we are more prone to inattentiveness, mistakes, illness, and accidents. According to Stanley Corrin, Professor of Psychology at the University of British Columbia. In the four days after we lose one hour of sleep following the spring shift to daylight saving time, there's a 7% increase in accidental deaths compared to the week before and the week after, a pattern that is reversed in the fall when we gain one hour of sleep on a given night. Why are we lo losing sleep and building debt? Because we live in a 24-hour society, most of us are chronically sleep-deprived, chronically in debt. Work pressures and family and social obligations often lead to long hours of wakefulness and irregular sleep-wake schedules. There are simply not enough hours in the day, so where do we cheat? We cheat on our sleep. America is becoming a nation of walking zombies to an extent perhaps succeeded only by Japan. The human body has limits as to what it can endure without rest, and sadly most of us are grossly exceeding those limits. Sleep deprivation is akin to depriving yourself of food. Reducing your caloric intake by a constant amount each day has a cumulative effect. If you can continue to burn more calories than you consume, you will lose weight. Keep this up and eventually your body begins to consume itself. Taken to an extreme, you will starve to death. Because sleep loss is cumulative, it can have similar devastating effects. People who go several days without sleep often experience such detrimental symptoms as hallucinations, delusions of persecution, slowed reflexes, impaired judgment, and feelings of hostility. In addition to the hurried and harried who are not obtaining adequate sleep, approximately 40 million Americans suffer from chronic sleep disorders an additional 20 million to 30 million individuals have intermittent sleep-related problems. If you fall into any of these sleep deprivation categories, your chances of being productive in a good mood and healthy are severely reduced. America is a nation at risk. We always seem to have miles to go before we sleep. According to Dr. William DeMent, Chairman of the National Commission on Sleep Disorders Research, the national sleep debt is larger and more important than the national financial debt. Are you a contributor to this deficit? If so, you're far from being the person you can be. You're hurting yourself and perhaps 
innocent others as well. The consequences of sleep deprivation. Imagine sharing the road with someone driving in his sleep or being a passenger in a Boeing 747 on final approach, your fate in the hands of someone who is barely awake. Sleep deprivation not only affects those with minimal sleep, but also can give can have grave consequences for well-rested others. Rest. That's what I need is rest, was the Eastern Airlines Captain James Reeves comment to the control tower on a September 1974 morning, 30 minutes before crashing his airliner at low altitude, killing the crew and all 68 passengers. A five-month-old boy died of heat exhaustion after he was forgotten for nearly 10 hours in the backseat of a car. Robert Gaito, a computer programmer who was supposed to drop his son at daycare at 7.30 a.m., but forgot the baby was in the car and went to work. He didn't realize his mistake until 5.15 p.m. When his wife went to the sitter, learned the baby was not there, and called her husband, According to the doctor who performed the autopsy, the boy appeared to have struggled furiously against his seat belt and died of extreme heat exhaustion in the enormously hot car. Even after he had been dead for some time, the infant's temperature was 106 degrees Fahrenheit. The father was described by a co-worker as a dedicated, driven employee who put in a lot of extra hours and had probably overworked himself that week to the point of distraction. He was overtired, I guess. You are never exempt from the debilitating effects of insidious sleepiness. No amount of motivation or responsibility, even in risky or potentially dangerous situations, can override the powerful and inevitable consequences of extensive or cumulative sleep loss. Impaired performance and unintended sleep Examples abound. Fred Smith, founder and chairman of the board, Federal Express, once said, You don't realize how fatigued you can be. I went to sleep one time in the Marine Corps walking, and I walked about a mile, as best as I can recall, until I fell into a ditch. James Rich, a private pilot filing, flying a one-hour trip from Springfield, Kentucky to Crossville, Tennessee. Fell asleep after putting his plane on autopilot. He woke up six hours later over the Gulf of Mexico with an empty fuel tank. Rich had no flotation device aboard. He did not know how to swim. Luckily, he was rescued by the Coast Guard, but his $70,000 plane sank. In 1989, the super tanker Exxon Valdez crashed into a reef in Prince William Sound, Alaska, and spilled. 258,000 barrels of crude oil resulting in extensive pollution, loss of wildlife, and a $2 billion cleanup bill. The mate at the helm was described as being too sleepy to perform his duties, severely sleep deprived, and apparently asleep on his feet. He failed to respond to simple clear signals to turn the vessel back into the shipping lanes. Failure to repay an accumulated sleep debt can lead to bankruptcy and produce bizarre behavior, severe drowsiness, or unintended sleep seizures at inappropriate times. It really does happen. A 90-year-old man accused of killing his wife of 62 years told his doctor and investigators that he strangled the 86-year-old woman because her persistent cough kept him awake at night. You don't understand what I've been through. The last three weeks have been terrible and I haven't had any sleep in three nights. A sleepy computer operator working late at night ran the same program over and over for eight hours and it cost him more than $100,000 to his employer. A waste treatment plant operator or a big oil refinery dozed off in the middle of the night and inadvertently dumped thousands of gallons of chemicals into a nearby river. A pickup truck carrying 20 people veered off the freeway into a ditch near Barstow, California, killing 12 and injuring 8 others in one of the worst single vehicle accidents in the state's history. The cause? A driver who had fallen asleep. At 3.58 
a.m. on April 13, 1984, two Burlington Northern freight trains collided head on the signal main track at Wiggins, Colorado. Five, five train crew members were killed and seven locomotive units and 26 rail cars were destroyed. Total damage was estimated to be three million. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the probable cause was that the engineer and the and other head end crew members of one train fell asleep, forgetting to extend flaps before takeoff, shutting down engines in midair, trying to land without the wheels down, landing at the wrong airport even nodding off aren't all that uncommon once exhaustion reaches a certain level one delta airlines boeing 727 crew warned worn out from four hour from four straight days of grueling pre-dawn flights almost crashed into some office buildings the jet made pre made a premature descent through heavy clouds to 400 feet before the startled crew realized they were still nearly 13 miles from the runway. One commuter crew fell asleep at 16,000 feet just before the plane cruised into a violent Midwestern thunderstorm on autopilot and almost went into a stall. A former United Airlines co-pilot reported feeling tired over Denver on a delayed late-night coast-to-coast flight. He dozed off when a stewardess entered the cockpit to talk to the captain and the flight engineer ostensibly to keep them awake. He woke up several minutes later to, f- to find that the captain, flight engineer, and stewardess had all fallen asleep. Those suffering from sleep disorders know all too well the cost of sleepiness. Sleep apnea has ruined my life. I am now disabled and have lost a well-paying job. I cannot work because I keep falling asleep. I cannot watch television, read, or attend movies or plays. I am unable to drive my car. I have lost contact with most of my former friends. Who wants to be around a person who falls asleep during dinner or conversation? Although you may, although you might be able to avoid severe levels of sleep deprivation, even a moderate sleep debt can seriously affect the quality of your life. The research findings are quite clear. Sleep loss is devastating to performance.